Hey everyone and welcome to part 6 of the build of the Master Grade 1100 scale Freedom Gundam version Wolf. I've decided to call it that because I'm doing a custom paint scheme. And I might do that for all my uh, my Gumpler that aren't standard paint schemes or if I do any customization. I like the kind of sound of version Wolf. Uh, where are we up to? Well in the last one I did some sub-assemblies. Uh, since I've done that I've gone off and painted the parts for the hip cannons, guns, which are called something. It's here. I can never remember. Uh, I built one already, as you can see. Uh, this is how it would go on the skirt, thus, on the side. But of course, if you want to go into super combat mode, you do a bit of funkiness. And you have a big ass gun. And it also has a little handle that comes out the side for the hand to grip onto. Uh, I didn't paint this, uh, basically because I forgot. Um, but it looks alright anyway. It's a nice little difference in colour between the colour I've used, which was, if I can find it, uh, Tamiya XF19 Sky Grey. Uh, and once it's matte varnished and weathered, it'll look kind of cool anyway. And I don't really plan on having the guns out when he's posing. I'll have them all folded up. So they can come out from the hip, or via this funky folding mechanism, which is a bit fiddly. Uh, it goes back together again. This little sight goes in this little notch there and this big chunk here goes in that notch there and then it sits on the side uh, as a side as a hip uh, skirt quite cool so I'm gonna build this really quickly now uh, and then I need to crack on with showing you how to uh, mask off and paint the part for the gun because I'm gonna make this bit red so let's get this done now quickly uh, it's fairly straightforward theoretically we need so I'm going to move these parts out of the way. So what do we need? We need uh, these two parts for the butt, butt, uh, butt of the gun. Polycap 22. As I said in the last episode, there's always little bits uh, to watch out for with the polycaps while I check my focus. Uh, in this case, in this one, you've got two little tabs. Uh, these need to go into these two little slots here. Yeah, you see? So I'm just going to put that in there. And that goes on here. There's no extra parts to put inside. Nice and simple. Then we have the grey part, which should go like, uh, like that. Again, it should fit so this edge is flush and that edge is angled. I've got quite a bit of fading on the gym and grey on these on these pieces on this gun. But I'm happy with that because I'm going to weather it anyway. Um, but yeah, it didn't come out as a solid gym and grey. I tried to pre-shade and then overpaint. And it came out a little bit light and patchy. But again, that can be fixed in the weathering. Uh, then the red piece goes on the end. And the beauty of that grey piece is that it's the grill that shows up in here. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if that's in focus, I can't tell. Uh, but anyway, it shows up through there. So that's that bit. Uh, next we have the first part, which is uh, these two. Put that there out of the way. So we have the end piece first, which you build first, which is those two end pieces in this joint. This is the funky little joint in the middle that lets it all bend. That simply snips on there. This goes over the top. If I line it up correctly. ka -ching. Now we have the centre part. Not centre parks. Centre part. Uh, where we have a polycap here again, the notches go into the little recesses. The handle, the grippy handle, has, if you can see, I don't know, it has a large nub and a small nub at the top. The large nub needs to be at the top, and this little nub here needs to stick out into the inside of the gun. Uh, then we have... That goes on here... This edge needs to be flush with that edge, obviously for when it's extended. And this simply goes on top. Click. 
and then you have this little turny hinge bit hinge that locks in it's quite a neat little uh, little joint I do like that then on to thend we need this piece which I forgot to get into my pile with the little tab if you can see it little tab at the top slides on there like that and the red piece has the little tab there sticking out at the bottom if you could see it, if I had it in shot that needs to go at the bottom there's a little hole in here that it slides into now it's a bit of a tight fit but you kind of slide on that way and it goes in so that's that piece rather nice and last but by no means least the little white side part that snaps in there if you line up correctly it snaps in there properly uh, we have it needs to be this way so it's that goes on that side there is this little handle uh, which is the bit that goes into the hip skirt joint it needs to be this way up with sticking up that way and it's also a pig to get in because it doesn't necessarily click into place it just goes in and then you're in so I might have to fiddle around with it a bit I find it easy to put it on that no, click there I find it easy to put it on before you assemble everything rather than after uh, this needs to go on here this peg into that hole if I could see what I'm doing this needs to be that way up so it's that hole onto that peg and the paint wasn't a problem I didn't put a lot of paint on so I don't have to worry about it being a really tight fit that goes on top snicked and that is your hip gun now I'll probably display it or I will display it with the gun folded up because when it comes out the side of his hips it looks kind of a bit rude have I got that? That goes in there. So we have two guns of the hip. Kick ass. Right, what's next? Let's move these out of the way. Really rattling through now. Now next, I need to show you how to mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to show you how to mask off this. This is the, the, uh, the little sort of plating that goes over the top of the gun. Now, in reality, when you get the kit, this raised part here is a nasty blue sticker. Now, I'm not doing the blue blue, I'm doing the blue red, so I need to get it red. The only way to do that is to paint it. Could brush paint it, but it would probably look like ass. So the best way uh, is to spray it, uh, either with an airbrush. Uh, through all this build, by the way, if you've not got an airbrush, don't worry. A lot of this stuff you could do with rattle can paint. It's not really advised, and the metallics you're probably going to struggle with, so you might not be able to do the metallic painting. Um, but you know the whites the greys and things to me I do a lot of rattle campaigns and there are other ones out there um, you could do it that way but it's worth getting an airbrush even a cheapy one to start with just because you'll get much better results so I need to mask off the white part of the gun so it stays white and so I can paint the red what do we need we need some masking tape standard to me a masking tape we need uh, a knifey knifey I've got red paint on there I must change that blade it's still sharp it's just it was there when I sprayed something and it got in the way and and cocking tail stick or toothpick or as some people say toothpick and that drives me insane the same kind of people that say personal stereo in Kenya I hate that learn to pronounce things correctly right so it's quite simple so first of all take your Tamiya tape if you can get the big tape which is the 18 millimeter it's the big fat stuff Whenever you take tape off, ow, click your wrist obviously, take the first little bit and just get rid of that because that's been out in the air so it might not be that sticky. So take your piece of tape, first and foremost, slap it on. Just try and get it flat if you can. Don't worry if it's not perfectly lined up. Uh, just give it a rub down with your thumb just to make sure it's flat to the, the white area and to the ridge. Now first and foremost, get your thumbnail, or trim thumbnail in my case, and just gently push it into the, the little ridge around the bit you're wanting to paint. And don't worry if it's a bit scrabbly. 
there's usually some remedial work to do. Just push the tape down so it goes into that edge. What we need to do now is get that really flush and I hope you can see all this. So take your cocktail stick or toothpick and what we're going to do is get the stick kind of perpendicular or maybe I don't know that kind of angle and we're just going to run it along not stab it in just run it along the edge to push that tape into the edge even more just gently you don't need to push very hard and we're just going to push that in so you get a nice crisp edge now the next step take your sharp hobby knife and all we're going to do is first of all very gently we're not going to cut through the paper straight away very gently we're just going to gently score almost no pressure along that line that we've just squished in so about a 45 degree angle against that edge and just very slowly score it you'll hear the paper crinkling crinkling a bit you hear a little noise this is just to sort of break the back of the paper just to break the fiber now this edge here might be a bit rough and ready, so, but don't worry about that. It's going to be a bit hard to get the knife. You should never do a knife towards yourself. It's going to be a bit hard to get the knife on the, on the edge here because the tape wants to naturally curve the other way. But don't worry because we can tidy that up later. So same here, do that bit. I hope I'm doing this on camera. If you can, go from a corner outwards, not, not into the corner. Don't go like that because you'll just get stuck on the corner. Again, try and keep it at 45 degrees. Just gently score along the edge. This is a tricky bit at the end because it kind of has a chamfer and goes up. So again, you might not get it spot on at the top here, but don't worry, we can tidy that up. Okay, so once you've done that, you've basically broken the back of the paper. Go back again. And again, not too much pressure. You're not pushing down. You don't want to make a big gouge in the paint. But just go back again. And you should this time be cutting through the paper. And what I said about not going to the corner, I've just done that. I've done it twice now, but hey. Just go back and over your lines. Try not to go up above the corner because that's the area you're wanting to mask off. So nice and gently go over again. And this should now have cut the paper. So what we need to do now is just kind of snip some of this away. You can cheat a bit with some scissors here because I don't want to snip down to the line. I'm, so I'm going to tidy this up. So Just give it a gentle tug. And you should find, if you're lucky, and I'm not, that it comes away. I've not broken the paper fully here. So I'm just going to nip that. What you should find, if you're lucky, is if you've broken it all the way along, it should, if I can get it on camera, start to pull away that edge very nicely and that is now masked now what you might find is when you do it I've been quite lucky there you might get a bit where perhaps you've cut just above this line and there's a, a little gap where you can see the white underneath don't panic too much if that happens drop your tape like I just did if you get in little gaps all you need to do is take a piece of tape trim a piece off pick it up and then you can just, using the edge of the tape, this edge of the tape or that edge, not the edge they've just cut, you just then place that against the edge and line it up and flatten it down. So if you, for example here, if you'd missed a little bit, I've got one here you can see, I've added an extra piece here where I've just had to splice that in because there was a little gap there and I didn't really want that and there's one here as well. So on this edge though, it looks pretty spot on, I think, looking pretty spanky. Uh, Apart from up here it's a bit rough so I'll just trim here a little bit and you will get these rough edges where it goes over the top but don't worry too much just see if I can trim that 
difficult for me is I'm doing this from a distance. I'm not doing it close up like I normally would. So let's get that back. Get that little bit cut off at the end. If you're struggling, get some tweezers. Having shaky hands as well also doesn't help. Okay, that's fine. This rough edge here, like I said before, just get yourself a little piece of tape. I'm going to cut it this way as well, because I don't need a lot. Just need the edge. And just... Let me get a piece of blue tack. Sorry, arm. Because I haven't got enough hands. I'm just going to place this on here. It's almost right. Drag it around a little bit. If you've not stuck it down too hard, I can probably drag it a little bit. If I can get hold of it. There. That gets the edge. I'm not going to... Can I push it down? Yeah, I can. Now you might find when you pull this tape off after you've painted the red, you may have a few little bits of white showing underneath where perhaps the tape's gone over an edge or something like that. But don't worry, I'm going to be chipping it anyway. So the red will be chipped and you will see white parts where the paint is chipped away. So I'm not too worried if there's little bits that aren't quite covered. I'm just going to put a smidge of tape on the top here. And this doesn't have to be pretty because it's just covering up the top and that's all. This is just to seal the top part in. Don't need it to be quite so long. Squidge. Squidge. There. Okay, so that's now sealed in. Uh, I've got a little piece to put on the top, so I'll do that in a second. But that's basically masking. That's how you mask off a part. Just use simple tamir tape. Um, some people would do little tiny pieces and do a bit here and a bit there and a bit there and a bit. It's easier to do one piece, push it flush against the edge and cut it. I need to now go and paint that, put the piece on there. Uh, when you're finished and you want to take the tape off, because the paint underneath isn't varnished, don't just pull the tape off. Whenever you pull tape off a model, the best way to do it is not to yank it off upwards, pull it back on itself, like that. That way you can go slowly, you can see if you're pulling off any paint, and it's less likely to pull paint off. If you're really not sure and you don't want to risk pulling paint off, if you've got unvarnished, unprotected paint on the model, uh, then what you can do is get your piece of tape and just dab it on your trouser leg and then put it on the model and it'll have a little less glue and tap to it. Daddy, I did spray paint all the arm parts the good metal colour and I'll show you something. I've learned a valuable lesson with this kit. And that is, if you're going to paint things gun metal or any metallic shade, you need to do them all at the same time because is things like gun metal it's pretty much impossible to guarantee you'll get exactly the same color or mix of paint in your airbrush and as you can see here these are ever so slightly different just I've obviously put a little bit more gun metal or a little less I'm not sure um, this is more shiny silver I've not dry brushed this with the chrome silver yet so that might bring it back a bit but it is ever so slightly different so I've learned a valuable lesson, which is if you're going to paint metallic shades on your parts, if you're using a, a thin down metallic, if you're using it neat from the jar, that's fine. Um, but if you're thinning it down like I was to get through my airbrush, uh, which you have to do with Tamiya paints sometimes, if they've got metallic fleck in them, it can be quite thick. So some airbrushes may struggle. Um, you're never going to get the same mix. So just to be safe, spray all your metallic parts at the same time with the same supply of paint. I shall go off and dry brush the metallic parts and when we come back we'll do the next bit. So, back in a moment. Okay, right, what's the next step? The next step is sorting out this here beam rifle. Um, now, because of the cover that I masked off earlier on, a lot of the top of the gun is actually completely covered. Uh, pretty much the only bit you're going to see is the very bit of the muzzle there and this bit at the back. Obviously the underside of the gun is exposed completely and because it's two halves when you snap it together you're going to have a big ass seam line all the way down the gun. 
uh, you're not going to see any of that. You might see this bit. I think you might see that bit popping through. So what we need to do is not have a seam line going down the middle of the gun. So I'm going to show you a very quick way to do this. Uh, just using nothing more than glue. I'm going to be using Tamiya Extra Thin. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. It's not too complicated. So what we do is we take our parts for the gun, put in the handle, grip I should say. This is supposed to rotate so I need to make sure I don't glue that bit. And all we do is we take our Tamiya Extra Thin and we put some of the glue on the edge. I hope you can see this. Don't be, you don't have to be stingy with it, but don't be too generous. You want it on both sides. The thing with this extra thin is it does dry quite quickly, so you might find a slightly thicker glue better, but no, we're not going to worry about it too much. A little bit fiddly. You can get a bit panicky sometimes if you think the glue is drying out, but don't worry. Don't stress too much. Do the same on the other side. I'm avoiding that bit where the, uh, the grip is, because I don't want to get glue on that. Because I don't want to glue it in place. Do it there. Didn't mean to put it on that bit at the back, never mind. Now all we do is very simply stick it together. This doesn't always work, but when it does. Now what I'm going to do, just before I push it together fully, I'm going to feed a little more glue in, just where I want it to be, to make sure there is some. And I'm not worried if it looks a bit rubbish at the moment. If I get glue everywhere, I'm not fussed. And you'll see why shortly, if I can get my hands to work properly. I'm going to squash this together. It doesn't always work. And this might not work because there's not enough glue. Hey, hey. Even those people who do this all the time get mess ups and when it's together just go over the seam line again don't worry for putting on loads of glue it doesn't matter it's not a problem at this point because we're going to be doing some sanding and filing anyway just want to get all the joints and seam lines. Now this kind of plastic cement is designed to melt the plastic. It's not designed to bond anything, it just melts the plastic together. We're going to get some clamps. We're going to clamp these in place. Give them a good squish. And what you should hopefully see, well you won't actually see it now because it's clamped together, but theoretically what should happen is as these squeeze together, the glue should come out of the join at least a little bit and have some kind of filling for no properties now it doesn't always work and I don't think this is going to work it doesn't always come out so what you have to do is go back and add a little more glue and keep trying gonna give it a bit of squish I'm just gonna squash these eh. Eh. Eh, eh. And now I need to leave that to dry for a while. I'm probably going to leave it for about an hour just so the glue dries hard enough that we can sand it. We'll come back to that shortly. And we're back. Okay, right, the glue is a time to dry. Uh, and I've actually set to doing most of the cleanup now. Um, basically what happens is, as I said in the previous section, when you squish the two halves together, the glue comes out and makes a bead along the seam line. And then all you do, you can see it on, on the butt of the gun here, the glue all along the seam line. All you do is you sand that. Simple as that. 
and I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, now it doesn't always work. Sometimes what you need to do is use uh, you know putty or fillers. Um, but if you're lucky, most of the time you can just get away with using glue to fill the seam line, uh, and then you're done. Now I've not left a particularly smooth and perfect finish on here because I'm going to be priming it and painting it. There are some some little hints still, uh, but the primer should fill some of those because it's a has a slight filling effect. So what we have is three different sanding sticks, reasonably coarse, medium and a fine finisher. Now if you weren't painting the model uh, and using sanding sticks or sanding paper you want to go progressively finer and finer till you got back to a glossy shiny finish to match the rest of the plastic. Uh, but if you're watching this I'm assuming you are actually going to be painting this thing. So uh, yeah it doesn't really matter if it looks a bit unshiny because you're going to paint over it anyway. So dead simple. All you need to do is get something to put your bits in. And we are literally going to sand over these. Now I'm using slightly flexible sanding stick, so I'm going to keep my thumb against it to keep it flat. And I'm not going to scrub too much, I'm just going to go slowly. Hopefully you can see all this without my thumb being in the way. I'm going to go slowly. And basically I'm just sanding away all the little blobs of glue that stick up. And what you should be left with is a smooth edge because the glue has actually filled the gap. You can see there's a little bit there where it's, it's not quite sanded. And that's because this bit's raised. So you just need to keep working away at it until you get the whole thing flat. Try and keep it flat and parallel with the surface, otherwise you'll end up with a curve. That's why I'm not going like this because I don't need to make a curved surface. Thank you very much. And there we go. There's that bit going now. So I'll just get a medium grit. Just sand that down a bit more. Not quite got rid of it. And just keep an eye on it from the side as well. Make sure you're not putting unnatural curves in there. Just going to move this arm out of the way. Thankfully that didn't get stuck in with glue. Yay. There we go. Now medium. This is really just to clean up now. I'm cleaning up all the marks I've put in with the coarse grit. And then we're fine. Just going to do it a different way for this bit. I'm only going gently for this one. And you should see, hopefully has now pretty much gone. Well, it has gone, let's not say pretty much. Uh, what I've had to do, by the way, uh, when I first did it, I used the Tamiya Extra Thin to go into the little crevice. Once that had dried for a little bit, what I did, I got some standard Tamiya, which is thicker, it's a thicker glue, and I just ran that over the seam line to make like a, a bead of glue that went all the way along. I obviously avoided any bits where there's fine details that I didn't want to lose, like little panel lines. Uh, went over it with that, let that dry overnight. It's, you only know, have to leave it for an hour or so, but I had other things to do. And then that gave me like a, imagine you have the surface here and there's a there's a seam here. The, the glue will be like a, a bubble over the seam. It'll go into the seam, but you have a bubble here. And all I've done now is just sand that down flat to the surface. So yeah, if you don't get enough bubbles coming out when you squidge it, just go with some thicker glue. Because this is this is like water. This is to go into the cracks. Go with some thicker glue, and you should be fine. You could start with this one straight away, but I wouldn't recommend it because when it does come out in bubbles, it'll be big, massive bubbles and lumpy. Uh, and if you've got gaps, you have to go back with more. So start with the thin stuff, and then fill in any remaining little holes with the thick. One other thing I did, I took, I sprayed and took the masking off the the gun shield or the gun cover. Looking quite good. There's a few little spots like there where it's not quite neat and tidy, but future oil washes and weathering will take care of that. So that's come out quite nicely. I did debate whether to mask off the strip on the inside as well, but I've decided not to. Most of that's not going to be seen, so it doesn't matter that it fades to white inside. That's no problem at all. Uh, I'll show you, because this just sits on top like that. The majority of it is covered up. So that's absolutely fine. So, uh, what's next? Next, we shall do... I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. So let me go and have a look and see what we can do next. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you today uh, is this paint chipping. Now, there are many, many different ways of doing paint chipping. Um, you can dilute to taste, as it were. You can do whichever method you want. I'm going to show you a quick method today which allows me to do lots of paint chipping very easily and completely in scale with the character, with the, the figures. This is the figure that comes with the kit, Kiri Yamato, I think. Uh, he's tiny, 1 100 scale. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. So you can see Kira is quite small, 1 100 scale, to be precise. And what we want to achieve are paint chips that are sort of into scale with him. Now, if you look at anything in the real world that's actually chipped, like an old truck or a JCB uh, or anything that's got loads of paint chipping on it, you're not going to see paint chips bigger than your head. It's very rare you see paint chips bigger than your hand. And if you know me well enough by now, if you watch my videos and follow me on Facebook and the Twitters, you know that I like to make my kits weathered. I don't do nice, clean, shiny models. And with these being military vehicles, let's be honest, they're going to be... Well, I prefer them to be battered and scraped and scuffed. They've seen some action. So the two things you need to keep in mind are how big is a person's head, and that's the way I do it, uh, or a person's hand on this kit, and also what's the structure of the paint. I like to have in my head when I'm doing a, when I'm doing a gumpler that there's some kind of futuristic space undercoat and then futuristic space paint on top. And I kind of take a few hints and tips from the old ILM style of doing things, the old industrial light and magic. They used to paint a base colour, then they would paint any stripes or coloured patches on top and chip those away to reveal the base colour, which is quite cool. So on mine, what I've done is something similar. I've painted the base coat, the Tamiya white. Then obviously the majority of the model is white, or off-white, uh, and then the other colours on top. So in my mind, these colours are painted on top of, let's say, this base colour. Now because the primer colour and the base colour are so similar, all I'm going to do is remove this paint to expose the primer underneath and because the primer is tougher than the paint on top it's kind of easy to take the paint off without going straight through to the plastic underneath not always you'll see on here there's some little bits in the in the foot where it's gone through to blue but i can live with that it just looks like something underneath you know doesn't necessarily that's the blue plastic for the foot but there's probably a reasonable re, uh, explanation why that would be the case in my mind so uh, there are other ways to do this one way is to use hairspray get all your base colour on, spray it with hairspray, put on the colours on top, wet it and take the paint off and it'll chip quite nicely. That's a brilliant method and I'll be showing you that later with the beam rifle. However, for the most part, it gives really big chips, which doesn't really work. I know it's kind of weird to say that when I'm going to be doing it on this kit, but on the gun it just looks kind of cool. Uh, it looks nice when there's a shiny colour with a matte colour on top. You could use masking fluid which is, there's millions of different types. I have a jar of Humbrol Mascol, which is basically just liquid latex. You put it on with a cocktail stick or a brush or something else on top of your base coat, spray the colours on, and then you just rub the Mascol off. Again, it gives really good effects, especially if you're making Star Wars kits in the larger scales, like 1 48th. Um, again, though, although you can do some small blobs, it can give you lots of big chips, which is, again, not what I'm looking for here. I'm going to be using no thing, nothing more complicated than this modelling knife. Uh, and I'm literally going to scrape the paint off. The reason I like this method is, if you can see on the shield here, let me just focusate it for you. So you can see I've got lots of tiny little chips and dings. I've built them up into little faded patches. Um, and it, I, I quite like this effect. It might not be the effect you're looking for, so this might not be the method for you. Uh, and you can see where it's a brighter colour like the red, it's a bit more obvious. You can see it on that side as well. It can give you some really good effects, especially on the feet. I say you can say some plastic there, but I can live with that. It's going to be weathered anyway. So it can give you a nice chipping effect, and you're kind of logically thinking where the wear and tear would be. Just move Kira out of the way before he disappears forever. So how do we do this? Dead simple, and I shall show you now. All you need to do uh, is take your part. I'm going to move these out of the way. In fact, I'll keep that there just for white balance. You know what my camera's like. My camera, I mean phone. So this is part of the backpack. Uh, it's just solid German grey. With a bit of pre-shading, but German grey is quite hard to keep the pre-shading showing through. All I'm going to do is take my blade, very, very gently. First of all, just run it along some edges. Not completely. I'm going to jitter with it and move the blade around a bit. Just to get... I don't want a nice long straight edge. I want bits. So what I'm going to do is just... 45 degrees to the corner I want. 
and just scrape it a little bit. And I'm, you see, I can I'm making my hand shake, so I'm naturally jittering it. So you get some rough bits and some uneven bits. Now the important thing here is not to think about this. Don't put too much thought in. If you think too much, you'll get really unrandom scrapes. And the main thing you're trying to look for here is randomness. So I'm just going to do that corner. Or edge, I should say. I said edge a lot in this episode in the last one. Uh, just a bit there. And sometimes the faster you go, the better. I've already started on that bit, you can see. Alternatively, for this stage where you're just getting the edges, if you want to, you can just use a sanding stick. Just going to highlight these edges a little bit. Again, you're looking for randomness. And try and keep in mind the size of a person's hand. Now, sometimes you will actually go through to the plastic. In this case, it's not so bad because the plastic's sort of German grey coloured anyway. Okay, if you want to speed things up, you can use a sanding stick very, very gently. You can just go over an edge, see if we can find it an undone. Like this edge here, it's completely not scuffed. If I just do that, it's a very fine sanding stick. It's not a harsh one. If I just do that gently enough, and I'll have a white edge. And it's a good way to do edges quickly or to do faded patches. If I wanted to fade it somewhere and I did that on the feet to give me some fading so that's your main color I'm gonna zoom in a bit more picture quality will now go to the dogs that's my maximum zoomage now how do I do the chipping again dead easy kind of get a natural wobble in your hand don't think about it get your hand going like this like Tony Fairclough's excited hands and all you're doing is kind of use like this part of your blade if you can don't use the if I could show it it'd be great Use this part of the blade, not the very tip, but this part. Get it to the edge and just, what you want to do is try, I try and do it from the edges to start with. And you're just going to dab at it. You'll get little tiny chips. If I can see, do it so you can see it again, that'd be brilliant. I'm just dabbing at it. And I'm trying to make it make sense. I'm trying to make it come from an edge or a bit where I've already faded so I'm just doing this I don't know if you can hear in the background my neighbor's dog is crying its eyes out because it's outdoors and it's cold and it wants to be indoors but I think they're out so it's a SOL on that one I'm afraid little fella uh, do a bit more here sometimes what I like to do is look at a corner here and try and fade it from that corner so I uh, sorry I couldn't tell you weren't in shot get a corner here and I think right well maybe this bit's going to be faded in this corner so I'll just dab at it you'll notice here I'm actually using the point of the blade just because it's hard to get to with the with that bit so as I go for the point and I'm also doing this from a distance I'm normally quite close up when I do this so it's not looking perfect go from an edge here oh, sorry I'm so zoomed in you can't see anything I'm doing uh, just I'm looking for little pepper mark, peppering it with little marks. That's what I'm looking to do. Looks like a little mini Kubelwagen, that actually. It's quite cute. Put the back wheel here, front wheel there. Uh, never mind, my brain. Uh, do some more here. And if you gently, I'm doing it gently, just enough to scrape the paint off. And because I've airbrushed this, the paint on top of the primer is quite light. So it's easy to get off without going through the primer. But like I said, if I do go through the primer, it's German ground underneath anyway. It's a bit more challenging when you've got a different colour underneath. I'm gonna, I am going to do some on here because like I said earlier in the other episode, I'm actually going to make this this bit a, a panel line, not just a, a seam that I haven't filled in. So I'm going to... To make it obvious that it is a panel line and not just something I couldn't be bothered filling in, I'm actually going to chip it. Hiding it in plain sight. If you can see that because the shadow. Let's do a bit here. On this edge. You can do as much or as little as you want. I'm probably doing a bit more here than I normally would, just because I'm demonstrating to you. 
what you can also do if you want to is do some scratches or do some edges. If you do an edge, just get the blade on the edge and just do that. Uh, you can do scratches if I wanted to do a scratch here. So I'll just kind of go, literally, just do some straight lines. You'll see on the front of one of these feet, actually, I did some here, some little scratches here, which just give little chunks of paint. Uh, and then what you can do then, if you can go back and you can just build up chips in areas you want them to build up. So add a bit more. If you want to have like a faded effect, do some chips in a general shape and then do more towards, say, a point of origin as if something's pinged off the paint. Uh, if you've ever, if you were born in the 70s like me, you may have a memory of those drawings. You used to get like a piece of black slate or something and it'd be covered in some black stuff. And you get a little scraper and you'd scrape away to make a picture and you'd be able to draw with it. This is basically the same thing. I don't know what they were called. And they were usually pictures of owls and things. And there we have paint chipping. That's the simplest way that you can do paint chipping is to actually chip the paint. Now you could use a pin or something else, you don't have to use a, a sharp craft knife. If you, you use an old blade actually, I tend to use a blade like this one that I'm going to change soon anyway, because it's covered in paint. So, so you can get different effects. Uh, you can build up painting and shading. You can drag it across panel lines and edges. And you can build it up out of shot to your heart's content. Uh, it doesn't really work if you brush painted anything because um, the paint's too thick so this whole technique is useless if you're brush painting if you are brush painting you're probably going to want to use something like masking fluid because then it won't really matter how thick the paint is uh, but i wouldn't advise brush painting models anyway uh, I'd, i do brush painting for small details and little bits and bobs but i don't use it for for painting whole parts and let's say i want to put a scratch here there you go there's a scratch perfect that's my simple paint chipping method. As long as you've used a light colour undercoat, so as long as the undercoat colour, the primer colour, sorry, is the colour you want. If you use a really dark primer, like black, or a dark grey, or red, or something like that, then this technique's probably not going to work, because that's the colour that will show through. But because the majority of the kit is white, or off-white, and the primer is very similar, ka it's fine. The only downside is, I can't do this technique on the white parts. Let me zoom out again. I can't use this technique on the white parts because it's white under white so you wouldn't see anything there's two ways around that um, you can like I do a lot of the time is just not worry about that and just leave it because it looks kind of cool anyway uh, it makes it look like then this paint is chipping off the white paint and the white paint is some super strong space paint that doesn't chip it works for me it's in my brain everything works in my brain um, or you could paint the chips on that's one other method you can use um, you will basically take a very fine brush uh, and this is the uh, the MIG way of doing it. If you use their ammo at weathering things, you would basically, like I've done here, you would literally paint chips on very carefully. Now I've tried it a couple of times, and I'm not very good at it because I tend to get big blobs. Um, and I use Tamiya paints, which kind of dry out really quick, so it's not ideal for that. I probably use Vallejo paints. Um, so I will try that at some point, but I'm happy to leave the white as it is because then my in my mind it's the paint underneath that's more resistant to this paint, the red or the grey or the blue or whatever of the colours you're using. So, quick down and dirty guide to chipping. Um, give it a practice, go on something, you can throw away a bit of spare plastic. Uh, something with lots of edges and surfaces. Uh, and just practice and practice and you'll you'll kind of get it. Don't think about it. Don't keep your hand tight. Just relax your hand and let it, let it scrabble about where it wants to go and the knife will do the work for you. So I'm going to go off and do the rest of all the coloured parts now. Uh, I've done some bits. The red on the wings is a bit of a pain for some reason. I had a lot of trouble. I'll see if I can find one for you. I had a lot of trouble getting the paint off to primer with these. Just it was being really tough and it was quite hard. But I had left this for a couple of weeks anyway. So yeah, maybe I just left it too long and it's cured too much. I would say probably if you're going to do this, stick your paint on and then try and do the chipping within a day or two. There's no varnish on top of any of this. It's always bare paint on top of the primer. Try and do your chipping within a few days, uh, a day or two at the most if you can just because then the paint's still a bit chippy and you can get it off. If it's left two weeks like this, it becomes more of a paint to shift and I had I couldn't get any really big chips on here because it just wouldn't budge without going through to the plastic. Uh, the grey was a bit more friendly to chip. Came out quite nicely. Uh, but that's it. So that's going to do it for this time. As always, thank you very much for watching.
A couple of shout outs for you because I keep meaning to do this and never do. Kira says hello. You know uh, Tony Fairclough, my good friend who does lots of the YouTube videos as well, I've shouted him out before. Go and watch his YouTube videos. Uh, he's currently on a bit of a hiatus at the moment because he's moving out. But he's got a, a speeder bike build, he's got loads of Star Wars builds and other things. His address is here, it's Helgen something or other. Um, so go and watch his videos and subscribe to his channel. Obviously you're already subscribing to my channel because you're awesome, so we don't have to suggest you do that. Uh, and also Adam Cheese, another good friend I've met on Facebook and through uh, the Guru, uh, a good friend of mine and Tony's. He lives in Atlanta, uh, well it might not be Atlanta, he lives in Georgia, in the good old US of A. He's got a fantastic chilled out voice. Uh, and the best of laughs. He's also started doing some, uh, he's branched out into the world of YouTube videos. Um, he started doing a rather epic built from scratch TARDIS using balsa wood and other woods. Just, 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 here's a graph paper, I've drawn the plan, now I'll build it, that's it. And I'm, I'm pants at scratch building, so he has my ultimate respect. He's got a couple of episodes in so far and it's all going really, really well. So go and check his videos out. His address is here. Now, the thing is, I point like this, and then I never know when I get the caption if it's actually readable over these white bits. But hey. um, so go and check his channel out as well. Um, but other than that, obviously subscribe to this channel. Go and check out my Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you'll see the links at the end of this video. Uh, subscribe to everything you can, except cash or pot noodles, preferably pot noodles. And next time when we come back, we will be doing, I'll show you how to paint and do some hairspray chipping on the bean rifle. Um, but yeah, go and subscribe to everything, uh, go and check out my channel with more videos on it. The Wing Gundam is nearing completion, so it's getting there, I'll be doing another diary build for that soon. Strike Rouge isn't going to be starting for a while yet. And a bit of a teaser, today is Tuesday, the 25th of August. Tomorrow, Wednesday, I will have an enormous box turning up. And inside that enormous box is something very, very large, but very, very simple. And it's going to be... A video build coming up. I don't know when, but it'll be like maybe before I do the strike. But it's uh, it's going to be another video build series. But all I'm going to say is, as like I say, it's very big and simple. Not you, Tony. And it's the granddaddy of them all. So we'll leave you with that. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And from Kira, we say, adios amoebas. Yeah. I'm not doing that joke again. Bye.